Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about the top 10 acoustical mistakes most studios are making, part two. I think part one was the top five. We're going to add some more here as we go down the road a little bit. Usage, size, and volume. <clears throat> Everybody's trying to do too much in too little. Trying to do too many usages in too small of a space. There are breakpoints where voice and music work together or collide and fight against each other. So you have to be really careful and come up with a strategy so that your usage and your size and your volume fit into the space. I see that a lot, okay, today. Must calculate the space for treatment. Treatment has to be an objective right out of the gate because all small rooms have problems. Everything we do in, in a small room is a problem. So we have, to, we have to manage and we have to control that. And you have to allow for that. Low frequency management can take 12 to 16 inches of space. You do that in a room, 12, 13 foot width, you're going to lose a foot here, you're going to lose a foot here. You're down to 11. That all has to be calculated. So the new dimension for the width is 11. Is that a problem? How does it relate to the width and height? You'll have to just plan that all out, okay? Noise isolation, big, big problem in studios. They don't budget for it. They don't plan for it. They know it's an issue, but they use methodologies that won't work because they don't develop a strategy and look at the usage of each room and the amount of energy that's going to be transmitted. Another problem we see in, live, in these rooms, in studios, is live rooms are way too small. I mean, people are using closets to record electric guitars you know, with cabinets, so not good. You have to, once again, get a strategy, and these are all tactics. The size of the room is a tactic towards a certain sonic strategy. Reflection management, you gotta manage the reflections off the walls, consoles, everything. Because they have time signatures. You can think of them as individual mono speakers throughout the room. And there's thousands of them. So they have to be managed. Here's another one. Whew, biggest, big problem. Ceiling height, too low. Eight foot, horrible. Okay, seven foot. I saw one the other day, six foot. Way, way, way too low. You have to be careful with the ceiling because the ceiling height, I saw a 12 foot, 11 and 12 foot ceiling today with 50 cycle problem. 50 to, to 90 cycles, those are really bad frequency ranges to have floor to ceiling low frequency problems, okay? And no treatment is specified for that. They treat the four walls, but they don't think about the floor to the ceiling. Well, that's usually the smallest dimension of the three, so it creates the most issues, all right? So you have to be really, really careful. Make sure you allow for the treatment of that and, and calculate that in, in the dimensions. Glass and usage and, and the electronics. So glass is, you know, a bad surface to have in a room. A lot of guys are going electronic. They're using a monitor and a camera in the room. They're not, you know, staring through a glass window at the talent. They're using electronics. The talent today is used to cameras and monitors. You know, that's something they're comfortable with. People in my day, not so much, but Use, you know, the tools that we have and, and the tools that people are used to using and feel most comfortable with. And you get rid of that glass. You can monitor right there at the console. You can see the person right on the screen, okay? Here's where everything falls short. You must develop a strategy. What do you want to accomplish in this room? What reverberation time do you want? What attack and decay rate do you want? What size do you want to match your usage? How many players are going to be in the room if it's a live room? How many vocalists are going to be in the vocal room if it's going to be? A, is it male or female? We have to know all of these variables. What most people do is they use tactics without a strategy. Never works. Tactics will never get you anywhere other than the resolution of that own tactic. You have to look at the bigger picture. A tactic is a micro level situation, but the strategy is macro. And everything has to contribute to the strategy. So tactics are like stair steps towards the top, which is the strategy. That's your goal, what you're trying to, to reach. And you have to take each step one step at a time to get to the top. And each step that you take built, is built upon the step you took before that. So no skipping. It'll compound and increase your air rate. And every input, remember, into a room is air. So that's what we have to keep in mind. Top 10 acoustical mistakes most studios are making. I added a few more from our original one. Hope this helps. Thank you. 
Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis so that'll help you. Thank you.